hope the screen is visible to you is the screen visible to you yes sir. yes sir. Okay, right uh, so coming to the course we have uh, bft 701 ds1 that's the course code and the title is robotics and automation we have uh, 1.5 hour per week as a lecturer and then 1.5 hour for practical so totally like 42 weeks got four credits so the syllabus goes in this fashion like uh, we have in the first uh, uh, content which is uh, introduction to automation that we'll be looking after and uh, high volume manufacturing and automation then programmable manufacturing and automation and flexible automation uh, manufacturing and automation so these are the uh, initial contents or uh, kind of introductory contents that are there then uh, we have a typical thing called as microcontrollers where we'll be uh, looking after a lot of programming platforms like Arduino IDE then uh, some uh, online programming tools uh, as one of your friends suggested and, uh, and Tinkercad and th those are like simulation platforms so this is all about microcontroller where you will be learning the controlling part controlling aspect of a, a any typical project or maybe a robot also so after that comes the robotics uh, here only the introductory part actuation and then uh, what kind of uh, systems that can be implemented and what kind of sensors that are used and then how you measure a lot of parameters associated with the robots and all uh, different approaches for image recognition and all of that so that's all about the robots and then uh, we have some typical lab practice where you are supposed to build one small line follower robot okay. so that becomes your uh, assignment to be precise then we have some robotic applications also like uh, uh, material handling unloading painting welding and all so in this you'll be uh, understanding the application part of robots this is like the construction part and the requirement part for uh, any robotic system uh, here uh, in the the 34 to 42 hours uh, thing we'll have more uh, concepts on how to apply the robotics for the manufacturing process so here you can use uh, tools where um, freely available tools are there in the uh, market you can actually uh, use them download them and then you can use them for typical applications and all so that's the overview of the course uh, we have midterm which is for 30 end term for 30 and then evaluation for 40 marks totally it is 100 marks so these are some subject uh, textbooks that are associated and then the course content prepared by a few people okay so let us uh, start with uh, <laughs> okay so these robots are actually designed to uh, replace humans where the tasks are more or less repetitive in nature so first question i think most of you guys have answered what do you mean by robotics and what do you mean by automation automation most of you know like it is like the way of automating things automating things is without any human intervention or reduction of human intervention into any typical plant process okay is termed to be uh, automation like why do we need them in industry because human labor is costly at the same time human labor can get exhausted or they get fatigued when the process is repetitive in nature and moreover when a person gets fatigued the the, the major problem is he cannot do the job or he cannot finish of the job accurately or he cannot work properly ultimately that creates a production loss hope uh, i have answered this questions both the questions okay and at the same time when the production rate when you are calculating the production rate for example if it is a larger industry so when you are planning to calculate the production rate okay so it's all about how much you produce within a short period of time with the same quality aspects same quality uh, uh, considerations for example material without deteriorating the material quality you have to produce them within a short span right 
in this particular session we have uh, automation production process as the primary topic and then uh, we have mechanization and automation and types of automation automation strategies we have and then followed by different types of automation uh, uh, what do you say activators i would like to call then what and all devices and controls we require to perform that automation and some economic aspects of automation will be looking first thing as i mentioned automation is something which uh, has started in the early 1940s where they use some steam engines okay for automation and then uh, in early 1960s they have replaced these steam engines uh, there is when uh, the steam engines have been replaced with the diesel engines so they are more efficient they can do larger the work cycles they have larger torques larger uh, production rates and all when compared with steam engines where the breakdowns are mostly uh, uh, on a regular basis there will be some breakdown so these are replaced with diesel engines followed by we have in 1980s where the electricity utilization has been uh, hit the market so there is a huge transformation of industrial systems that is when uh, the actual industrialization has started that means rapid industrialization here it took like 20 years to start uh, from a, a steam engine to a diesel engine but where uh, in 1960s itself uh, there is a huge production change at the same time from 1960s to 1980s there is a huge transformation so these engines are noisy they also do have some breakdowns so they have been replaced with electrical systems which are cheaper more efficient can be controllable and in uh, early 1990s within a 10 year span of time these uh, electrical motors or whatever the associated electrical things have been i mean you can have a full fledged control on them where these uh, electronic control systems have come into picture that's that's when the plcs that is programmable logical controllers have started evolving then in 2000s and uh, even till today so the plant level automation has happened that means this is in 1990s it is only to i mean restricted to a machine for example somebody was talking about injection molds or somebody was talking about press type molds so where it, the, the automation is limited to that particular machine only but whereas in 2000s you have a huge i mean that's a holistic level of automation that has happened then we have opportunities that are existing in automation and computer integration as a part of automation so you have your uh, systems that uh, that you manufacture on daily basis or depending upon the market requirement that is your manufacturing support systems all the manufacturing support systems that require some facility for example these support systems will include some logistics also right so logistics will support your automation uh, thing uh, so if you have the requirement of 100 shirts so you have to think about the material that is required to uh, support this particular systems right and uh, we require some facilities that equipment would be your sewing machines cutting machines etc so that's the facility and uh, we have some potential computerization things so where and all you can uh, computerize in your plant so since logistics you cannot fully uh, computerize or you can monitor the logistics but internal plant material movement that is on bins okay so material transfer systems etc you can actually it's a manufacturing support system only you can have a potential thing where you can automate it okay similarly so you have some applications also for example i just want to maintain a, the stitch length okay or the stitch thickness to be like 1 mm so that is also a place where you can automate so there is some application associated with the facility and there is a place where you can actually uh, uh, find some potential uh, things where you can automate right so wherever there is a plant process which requires automation you can find an opportunity to automate the reason manual intervention will take time it might cause fatigueness at the same time it, it is not a, a convenient way of getting a throughput for a larger uh, 
uh, volume or a larger quantity based thing like an apparel industry. Process like this, when you, when you are planning to automate a process like this, for example, dyeing. So, so we have found the potential uh, computerization applications, potential automation applications, potential facilities which can be automated and what is your manufacturing supply systems or support systems. Now, you say, yeah, I okay. So, what is the next concept is how does your production system and how does your automation system are interlinked. For example, I have a production system in which you have facilities and manufacturing support system. Facility is nothing but your machinery, your workspace area and all the uh, connections that are associated with uh, supporting system. For example, uh, material transfer system or maybe waste uh, reduction system or waste transfer systems. Okay. So, all these things comes under manufacturing support systems, right. So, under manufacturing support systems, you have other things that are called as utilities, utilities. So, what do you mean by utility? Utility is something like your electricity, it is an utility, water supply, it is an electricity, I mean it is a utility. So, like this, we have multiple manufacturing support systems and facilities. So, in manufacturing support systems, we have manufacturing systems that is your machinery and the space and your factory plan and an uh, layout that is a complete space together comes as a facility. So, here you have a huge scope for automation, but when it comes to manufacturing support system, for example, I want to start a production of uh, let us say uh, 100 kilos of a particular material in a particular time span. So, the first thing that you have to look for is the raw material how the raw material is being transferred from the supplier or a vendor who uh, uh, gives you the uh, the raw materials ok. And uh, how I have to take this raw material as an input ok that depends upon your product design. If your product design is very complex then it requires lot of skill and expertise at this level that is your product design level itself. After that I have to plan for the manufacturing. So, this planning segment will look after this logistics exit and I have to control the manufacturing. How I can control the manufacturing? So, there are different ways to control a manufacturing process and you have some business associated functions. So, business associated functions are totally market dependent. So, for example, uh, you take the, the best example is sanitizer production. So, sanitizer production first you, you have to require some facility to manufacture a sanitizer. So, the key ingredient is ethyl alcohol okay, or methanol depending upon the type of sanitizer you make. So, how I should design the product? The product design in the sense the component design or the accumulative content design of the sanitizer unit. And I have to plan for example, I want 100 kiloliters of a sanitizer. So, I have to find whether the logistics persons are willing to supply this 100 kiloliters of raw material or maybe more than that, more than the requirement. So, that is manufacturing planning. And then we have manufacturing control, how should I control? Per day my production should not go beyond 10 kiloliters. So, in that way I can control the flow ok. At the same time how can I put this into the market? So, that is transferring the producer products into market. So, in both the cases automation has a huge scope in the manufacturing facilities and the, the factory and manufacturing support systems that you require to computerize it because based on that only your automation also will function. So, when you computerize the whole manufacturing process, your automation will work accordingly. So, which and all components should I automate in a production process? The very first thing is machine tools. So, what is the purpose of machine tool? Can somebody answer this question? So, here in this case, the transferring of the material, if it is a manual process, the biggest drawback is there is some manpower involved and it is obviously a, a delayed process. A man cannot transfer 1 ton of material from point A to point B. The reason is capacity, right. So, where the machines can transfer multiple uh, weights of materials from point A to point B, am I clear? So, here you have different types of material transfer systems that are available. In, in multiple domains, these material transfer systems are very much helpful. For example, if you want to transfer 
a, a, a big bag of sand from point A to point B. In construction industry, it is very much useful, right? <coughs> Especially in in industry like this, okay, or apparel industry, where why do we require to transfer these materials? For example, one product which is a combination of multiple fabrics or multiple fabric inputs, so you require to transfer materials from different places which are combined together. So the simple operation is stitching multiple fabrics together in one single into one single piece, okay, which is a typical production process that exists in apparel industry. <coughs> then assembly. So what do you understand by assembly? How many individual components are arranged to form a shirt, a complete shirt? I am not talking about uh, the, the single piece shirt and all, I am talking about a uh, stitched uh, kind of shirt, let us say formal shirt. So, there will be two fronts, Okay. two, there will be plackets attached to that, Okay. four, one back, okay. five, okay. Two, two sleeves, Okay. seven, then we have a sleeve may cuff placket, okay. nine, and then we have collar, okay. under then collar, under collar, then eleven fusing, fusing, twelve then fusing will be there in the placket also and in the cuff also. Right, you have buttons, so, button assemblies. Uh, thirteen, yeah, and button then, assemblies. Fourteen, the hem. All, all the hem will be So all together, uh, how much it will be? Some fifteen operations 15. or fifteen things that are supposed to combine yes, one sir. single object. Okay. Why this this assembly also should be automated? That's the biggest question. Why assembly should be automated out of all these four elements? Assembly should be automated the most because there are certain considerations. For example, you take the the, the best example of a shirt. Here, the size really matters, right? Where, uh, 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 for example, if you are assembling all these components together in order to form a, sh a shirt of 38 instead of 40, what happens? Isn't it a production loss? Yes, obviously. Right here, the 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 thing which is very crucial is you have to ensure that the assembly process should be taken place in accurate fashion because initially you are transferring or manufacturing or cutting down all these things can be done very simply, but assembly is very crucial. Right, this can be. The, this stands on the top of the pyramid when you consider these four things into consideration. The fourth one, you can replace humans, I mean, with robots in any typical manufacturing industry, right? So why you require to replace humans in manufacturing industry? The best example, or why you replace humans with robots in manufacturing industry, any typical manufacturing industry, no matter whether it is. Uh, a, a fabric industry or a, or a manufacturing industry or your mobile phone manufacturing industry, even in laptop manufacturing industry, no matter whatever it is, you can replace a robot with a human. The reason, first reason is it is it can perform repetitive actions without any error or with can, with can have an error with a limited uh, value, but it can do repetitive tasks 24 by 7, okay, at the same time at a rapid speed. Right, the places where you can put these robots into action is assembly operations, you can do, yes, because you take car manufacturing industry, all the components are assembled in one single piece of car, okay, one single block of car, where multiple robots will be in action to perform the individual things like welding, painting, assembly of But machines. sir, uh. so I guess in the April. So the next concept is where? the reasons. The first one as we discussed, so since there is a increase in the uh, labor, the productivity uh, will be less if you are investing lot of human beings in place of machines. Reason, uh, you require skilled expert to do a particular task, he will be charging you the more. So you have <coughs> reduced labor cost with that if you are replacing all these things with the proper automobiles. Mitigate effects of labor shortage. Now, in India, since it is a very good populous country, so you do not find much shortage of working labor because uh, there are there is an ample manpower that is existed in India. 
and most of uh, the humans that i mean most of the people that are uh, from the indian origin they are uh, uh, almost like 60 to 70 percent are now in a younger age so you don't find any labor shortage here but in countries which are dense uh, less densely populated for example we take the country like australia where you don't find much manpower or skilled manpower to uh, do a particular task if even if he is available or she is available they'll charge you the highest because the manpower is very less there so it will eliminate the routine manual or clerical tasks what do you mean by manual and cl- clerical tasks repetitive iterative tasks improved worker safety which is the which is the topmost thing in the pyramid if you take the reasons for automation first thing is safety so how automation can improve safety now improved product quality what makes automation that improves the product quality so product quality since you are measuring each and every parameter that is pertaining to a product right from thickness okay and then uh, distance between two strands there are, lot, there are a lot of other things also so it will actually improves the product quality by continuous monitoring only monitoring can define the product quality improper monitoring cannot provide a good quality of fabric or whatever the product is what is reduction of manufacturing lead time so can you name a few processes that can be accomplished uh, without or uh, where manual uh, uh, intervention should not be there especially in a uh, uh, fabric industry or maybe a parallel industry where the where a person should not enter into that particular process what are all the process that cannot be done manually in case of a apparel industry that cannot be done manually yes i have already given this example transferring one ton of materials from point a to point b it cannot be done yeah. by material flow material yeah. transfer material transfer is the most thing where in a parallel industry you have a lot of automation <laughs> what is this last point very trickiest point where avoiding the highest cost of not automate so it means you have to think before you start for the automation 